Yeah, I think almost every male who's heterosexual um, begins to feels a core shame based on the attitude towards sexuality. So if you have parents watching uh, a 14 and a 9-year-old boy and girl um, watch TV and they're watching CSI, you don't tend to turn the TV off if, if people are, are violent and killing each other. But if you walk by and you see a man and a woman having sex together and they're nude and a penis is going into a vagina, most parents would um, would be shocked and and turn the TV off immediately. So the basic message is that sex is dirty and sex is worse than violence and killing. But yet we ask boys still to be expected to initiate the sex. Girls now have the option, but boys still have the expectation. So the so boys being the less mature sex on average, um, knowing very little about sex, very little bit about girls, um, and the less mature sex are expected to risk rejection about something that's dirty um, with with a sex that, with a gender that's more mature. So they're both basically be to, being told sex is dirty, you risk the dirt. And and I think boys, when they start to understand that girls on average. Uh, particularly the girls to whom they're most attracted, the cheerleaders, the most attracted girl, attractive girls in school, the ones that look like the, the free porn that they can get, those girls are the most difficult to, they're, they're the ones that they'll get rejected um, by the most. They want sex from, uh, they want sex from a girl that they don't, that doesn't want it as much as they do. It's bad what they want. That's the beginning of shame in almost every heterosexual male. If you're a gay male, you feel even more shame because you're not only feeling sexual feelings, but you're feeling them to, toward the quote wrong sex. And you have to overcome all the, depending on where in the country you live, you have to uh, overcome another set of barriers in addition to the, uh, our antagonism or our feelings that sex is dirty. So I think shame and even be, so one of the reasons why boys, I believe, are open to being sold that they will be um, wonderful if they're disposable in war and you become a hero is that they learn that the girl, if they're a hero and they're wearing a uniform or they're making a great deal of money, that the girl will, will like them better. So the disposability is actually a compensation for the shame. You feel shame that you, that you aren't worthy of a girl, that you're morally, morally inferior to a girl, and you have to do something to compensate. You either have to pay for her if she's beautiful, you have to perform for her, you have to risk your, risk your life to, for her on the football field or wherever, and then you will be worthy of equality to her. And that, so that's the connection that I see between shame and disposability that I don't think has really ever been discussed before. Yeah. And I would like to support you, Warren, in that and just point out that, you know, many men, and also our questioner, the wisdom and the question, many men aren't even aware of shame. It's like, you know, it's a mm -hmm. feeling that, that pervades their life, but they don't even aware that it's actually – what shame means is you feel bad about yourself basically something's bad about you you aren't your you basically you're not being your authentic self and when men are emerging in their masculinity at puberty this is when masculine hormones are starting to peak they're starting to come forward uh, at that time and there's and one of the symptoms of it is increased interest in sex and you're suddenly a feeling that well is there is this okay and and a society saying it's not okay mm -hmm. and it's mixed messages that you're it's supposed to be okay but it's not okay mm -hmm. and when it's not okay that that inhibits that's that's this thing that you're now forming your sense of self you're individuating from your parents it's your first reflection on who you are and now you're inferior because you have this desire mm -hmm. and uh, it, it it has a huge impact, and not only, as Warren said, are we aware of how this is affecting young men and all of us when we're growing up, but that even as adults today, as we're grown up, we don't realize how shame uh, affects us. For example, a man feeling rejected in sex. The pain of feeling rejected in sex is magnified when one feels ashamed. If one feels innocent and, hey, honey, let's have sex, and she says, I want it today, uh, you go, okay, when should we have it? Tomorrow? It'd be as, as simple as saying, hey, honey, would you like to go for a walk? And she says, no, I'm tired. Okay, I'll go for a walk myself. And there would be no uh, big issue. But when an issue has shame around it, 
then basically you go, hey, let's go for a walk. A walk? You're a walker? Are you kidding? I wouldn't go on a walk with you. <laughs> it's it's a big wound. It's a sore spot that that pervades our lives. It becomes a foundation of something so fundamental as sex drive for men to feel in, 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 inadequate uh, as a result of that. So this is one of these other messages of of where – you know, we as parents need to make sure that we start finding the innocence in it ourselves so we can model this innocence and having a positive perspective of these things. But I wanted to add to the whole idea of the shame of just being a man. I think that's one of the first places it starts in our culture. But the other place it starts is with with this huge birth in psychology of what most therapists are trained to do. I've seen, I won't say all therapists, but people come to me as a last resort and they get their marriages saved again and again, which is why the Mars-Venus message is so popular. It really, really helps. And people would come and part of what men will say is, wow, finally somebody understands me. Wow, somebody points out that I'm not bad. Somebody's pointing out something's not wrong with me uh, because there's so much pressure that uh, the due to the feminization of masculine. The Mm -hmm. men are supposed to be more like women, and somehow being more like women makes us superior beings, and because we're guys, that we're some kind of inferior beings, and it simply can be the the simplest thing of the things I talk about is, you know, men basically not always wanting to talk about their feelings. You want to come home and forget the problems of the day, and a woman will say something like, what, you don't want to talk? Why don't you want to talk? Why aren't you feeling that way? Why aren't you doing the things that I would do? Why aren't you joining in to help? I always join in to help. Why don't you join in to help? Why do you have to wait to be asked? You know, Why are you wanting to be appreciated? I just do these things. There's so many distinctions that I've drawn in my work between men and women. And if we live in a world where it's all feminine, then anything which is masculine is seen as what's wrong with you. And that is another more uh, uh, another cause of the shame that we have for being men. That really we need to take away by greater understanding and respect for the differences in how they show up and where they show up. Mm. Yeah, no, that's 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 so, so well said, John. And, and just to bring it, bring it, you know, kind of bring it home, you know, Warren, what you said, and John, what you said, both so beautifully. Unique self in each one of these cases changes the game, and that's why it's so critical. Because if, if you're willing to be disposable, so Warren says you're willing to be disposable to compensate for the shame. 